Alrighty, so I just woke up not too long ago. It's already 3 p.m. <laughs> so uh, I guess let's look at uh, some of the stuff that they showed off from the KOF collab that's, you know, about to rerun on JP and KR. So I'm not going to do like an over overall patch notes sort of overview or anything like that. I just kind of want to look at the new characters because I'm, you know, as soon as they come out with the patch notes for global, whenever we get it, I'm going to have to look over them anyway. So I think I'll just leave myself a little bit of a surprise, I guess, and I'll go over those whenever they get translated and they do them for global. But uh, I do want to see the characters animations and we're going to look at the characters skills just to see kind of how they are because I think that's pretty much the most important thing. Um, I, I could, I, I'd just rather <laughs> wait and see what the events and stuff like that have uh, whenever we get them on global. So we're just going to try to keep it a little bit short uh but i say that every time and it ends up being like 10 minutes so let's look at terry's uh, ultimate animation really quickly i don't know a lot about terry to be honest but that's pretty cool i have to be <laughs> i have to be fair i mean it's not like super great like it's not like super flashy or anything like that uh i did see this though his costumes i don't know what it is about this costume on the left but that is a fantastic costume. I really like that costume a lot. I don't know what it is about anything like black and red. I know this is a little bit more gray, but like that whole sort of color scheme, top notch for me. So uh, yeah, pretty interesting. Not like an overly flashy animation, uh, but then again, he's like a fighting game character. So it kind of fits his aesthetic. Uh, let's look at Iori really quickly. Okay. I'm not really sure how to feel about that one. It's all right. Not bad. Uh, of course, every single one of his outfits are incredibly edgy. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just, <laughs> he's, he just seems like an edgelord to me, but I guess that's cool if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, either way, not as, even though, <laughs> even though all of his stuff is black and red, like I just said that I like, I don't know why, but the fact that it's like his normal color scheme makes it less exciting. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I really doubt I'm going to buy any costumes and stuff like that for the collab just because, um, as somebody brought up in a video that I actually did yesterday, um, it's actually kind of baffling how... Um, the collab characters normally are paywalled, like you have to spend money to get their outfits. They don't have like a, a period where you can buy them with diamonds, which is very unfortunate. Like that's super dumb of them. Like they should definitely make that to where you can, you know, get them with diamonds. Uh, it doesn't make any sense why they would just paywall it. Like, I mean, I, I guess I know why they do it, you know, just for money, but, um, I don't know. It's just very scummy, I guess. And um, you know, there's not really any point in spending a ton of money on these characters whenever, like, most of the collab characters end up getting, you know, outdated and obsolete within, like, a couple of, you know, weeks after their release. So, uh, I don't know. This, they could be different. These characters could be, like, top-notch, whatever, like, future-proofed. But um, the only only collab character that you even see in the meta anymore is basically just Keo. And he's not even, like, really good. He's just... I don't know, like, he's just kind of like a gimmicky character that you can throw on every once in a while and get some wins with. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Let's look at their actual skills. So, Terry Bogard. Um, <laughs> it's really funny because when I mentioned that he was coming to a friend, he was like, isn't he from the game Fatal Fury? But after looking it up, uh, I think the first KOF game was called KOF Fatal Fury or something like that. I can't remember exactly how it's, you know, worded, but... Uh, nice guy is his unique reduces all stats of the enemy with the highest remaining HP by 20% for one turn at the start of the allies turn in PvP so he's a PvP only unit uh, as far as his passive goes reduces all stats of the enemy with the highest remaining HP by 20% for one turn at the start of the allies turn so it happens every turn um, correct but it lasts for one turn, so it just it changes to whoever has the, the highest HP. Um, that's pretty interesting. Um, inflicts damage equal to 450% of attack on one enemy and depletes three ultimate move gauges. Um, I guess, you know, removing ult gauges is pretty important. But, I don't know, those moves kind of just seem kind of meh to me. And he has a stance. Okay, assumes a stance for two turns, which increases damage dealt by 50%. Uh, and inflicts damage equal to 450% of the attack via counter when an ally is attacked. Okay, so that actually makes him a lot of fun. I love counter units. Counter units are a ton of fun to use. And, um, I don't know. Assumes a stance for two turns. Obviously, this is the gold card. 
which increases damage dealt by 50%. So they're really going off the deep end here as far as like all the new characters and stuff like that. Basically increase damage dealt or decrease damage taken. Um, so he's going to continue on with the damage dealt trend, I guess. But um, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, honestly. I think that's really, really cool. Um, his ultimate is inflicts power strike damage equal to 490% of attack on all enemies. So it's an AOE power strike skill, which that sounds really strong. So that could end up being very, very good. Um, looking at Iori, um, die as it is. When the hero uses a skill for each ignite on the enemy, increases the damage dealt by 7% after the skill use... Uh, use increases the hero's attack related stats by 6% for three turns stacks up to five times So he is not limited to PvP. So that makes him a little bit more valuable. I think Because um, you can use him in PvE scenarios um, Inflicts co-destruction damage equal to 450 or 25% of attack on one enemy uh, If I'm not mistaken co-destruction is just debuffed enemies like it does uh, damage depending on how many debuffs they have on I think um, and then, yeah, uh, the other skill is inflicts damage equal to 280% of attack on all enemies and infects for two turns. Okay, I'm not as big on infect skills. Like, they're okay, but um, I assume that these characters are sort of trying to counter Bon, but we really need more of a Margaret counter. I don't know. Uh, inflicts damage equal to 630% of attack on one enemy and depletes three ultimate move gauge orbs. Okay, so that's kind of meh. Um, I don't know. They seem okay. Like, obviously, the fact that he does stuff with ignites um, is a little odd considering normally they try to give the character that, ha like, the, whenever they have something like that in the passive, the character will have something to do with ignites, so you don't necessarily have to run them with another unit. But, uh, yeah, they're basically just biting the bullet on that one and saying, like, okay, like, you're either going to have to run an Ignite unit or run Keo with Iori, so that way you can actually get some good use out of his passive. So, that's pretty interesting. Um, don't know how to feel. I think I like Terry better, just because I, I think Terry has the, you know, the, whatchamacallit, the skill, <laughs> uh, the counterattack, which is pretty cool. Uh, it looks like he already has the banner on here as well, so it looks like Terry and Iori are both... Um, 0.5%. Oh, wow. And then they just completely just destroyed the rest of the rates for the other KOF units, and they're just regular rates. That's actually really disappointing. I would have run, much rather them been like a 0.2 or a 0.3 and then just knock these down even further. Um, I guess that's good for me because I don't have these two units, but that's really bad for anybody else that either doesn't have these four characters or whatever because you know it's just going to be completely odds and these are four characters out of like this has to be like 10 characters or so um so four characters and then there's 10 other characters that you can basically pull instead of these with the same rates that's actually really uh bad that's really dumb uh they should it's a collab these are this is their banner that doesn't make any sense okay uh, I guess if you're going for Terry and Iori, you're in the clear, but, uh, sorry, new players or, like, people who missed the collab, I guess. That's really dumb, stupid Netmarble. Um, collab relics. Okay, so I will actually look at this really quickly. I know I said I wasn't going to look at the whole thing. I'm an idiot. Uh, six new relics added to the col er, to the collab units. To craft these relics, you do not have to farm the usual demonic beast, Hraz Uh You can use the following materials obtained from the various collab events to craft the relics. So, um, okay, they already have the relic effects. So it looks like these are the three materials that you're going to use. I guess you can get all of them from KOF events. I don't know if you're going to have enough to craft all six but I kind of hope so. But if not, I mean, I guess just kind of like look over them and choose wisely. Um, let me look at this a little bit more. I know it's going to be cut off a little bit on you guys' end, but I'll just read it for you. Uh, Terry's is when the hero uses a stance skill, removes all debuffs on the hero and increases all stats of the hero by 20% for two turns. That's pretty solid. Uh, Yagami or Iori uh, for each ignite on the enemy increases or decreases the enemy's penetration uh, crit chance and crit damage by 2% excludes deathmatch okay 
uh, Keo, at the start of the ally's turn, inflicts two ignites on one random enemy for one turn. So that's actually pretty interesting. It says applies when entering battle. Um, so basically one, one additional hero is going to get two ignite stacks as soon as the battle starts. I don't know if that's necessarily that great because it's like a one and done sort of effect. But pretty interesting nonetheless. Athena, uh, when the hero receives damage greater than 30% of max HP, recovers HP by 40% of the damage received. That's pretty interesting. Kind of tanky. Uh, when the hero receives a buff for my when the hero receives a buff increases all allies attack by 15 percent so that one's actually pretty good because she already like whenever you merge skills or like rank up her skills in general she gets um she gets three buffs one for each of a, uh, her like main stats so then she's going to get an additional <coughs> or all increases all allies attack by 15 percent okay so that's actually even better that's honestly pretty good like i think my might <laughs> might have one of the better ones uh, Rugal, when the hero receives damage, increases the hero's penetration by 10%, limit five times. So his pin is going up really high, up to up to 50% higher, uh, which is pretty solid. But pin teams are like way like driven into the ground at this point. So I don't necessarily know how good that's going to be. If we if we do end up getting enough to get all of the uh, the characters. Um, their holy relics that would be really really cool um, it looks like you're going to be able to do special missions to get one free multi on the banner and you're going to get a free copy of Mai which is really cool because Mai is pretty good uh, she's pretty interesting and she's very hot uh, so that's pretty cool uh, we're getting level 80 or level 90 increase uh, to our account it looks like they're going for wow okay these are way different than I thought they were going to be um, 6 mil uh, box cc 8 mil box CC, 10 and 12 mil all, and then you get the respective rewards for those, which is really interesting. Um, damn, I'm just going to have to go over this whole thing. I feel bad. I said I wasn't going to, but hey, whatever. It is what it is. <clears throat> um, I don't know how much, how in-depth he's going to go with this whole constellation thing. I didn't actually think that they were adding this like right now, but uh, I guess they are. So, seven constellations system added. I guess constellations was the correct thing. Uh, obviously, they look like they're doing a lot of stuff with stars, so that makes sense. Um, unlock the system when you have 80 or more units. It is a group growth system that allows you to acquire additional buffs and stats as you collect and grow more characters. Access the page by clicking account combat class button on the character page. Unlock the next constellation by completing the previous one. When each of the constellations is complete, you get various rewards. Okay, so it's not like a, it's not like a per character sort of thing, which I was really afraid of. I was like, oh my god, if I have to do one more thing for every single character, I'm just gonna like, <laughs> bad things will happen. So it looks like you click on your account combat class, and then there's like maybe stages or some sort of like grid system. I know a lot of uh, gotcha games have like grid systems for their characters to like upgrade stats and stuff like that. But I guess it's like going through the entire box like you're getting all these rewards for your entire like cast of characters so that's really really interesting uh it looks like you have more of like a close-up here that's like what it looks like when it's completely full um use growth points gp to activate all stones red green and blue and mana stone uh in this in the constellation to get buffs when the stone is activated attack defense and hp stats will get or will be buffed gp can be obtained when you obtain a new hero evolve awaken super awaken level up the ultimate move obtain costumes okay so that's very interesting i wonder how much like for my account i have like a bunch of stuff already i wonder how much like initial gp i'll start with then um Four, you can now skip animations on gear salvage slash engrave character evolve awaken super awaken level up ultimate. Okay, that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, max level or max limit for friendship coins removed. Oh, that's actually huge. Okay, that's not like a, a like a crazy crazy thing, but like that's actually really nice to have because um, normally you can only have two thousand friendship coins, and you could like sometimes for like different events and stuff like that, you would need to just like save your friendship coins to buy certain things out of the shop, um, which they don't really do that anymore. But now you won't have to worry about like hitting the two thousand limit and then not being able to claim more uh, coins. So that's kind of cool. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, obviously this is kind of vague. Like we don't have like too much info on it. I want to know, like, you know, if it's going to do like the entire box, of course, I think it will. But then again, like some of these characters don't need buffs. Like some the older characters need buffs. I wonder if it's going to like increase characters 
differently like depending on who they are like I wonder if they just have that sort of system already in place for it uh, I kind of hope they do because uh, some of these characters need a big buff whereas obviously festival units and stuff like that don't really need a buff at all um, so that's really interesting I don't know we're gonna have to like experiment with that and everything when it comes out but that's pretty much it I mean until we get more info on this I'll definitely try to look into it at some point uh, whenever we get some more translations or some more info on it but the patch honestly looks really solid. I like the new characters. I mean, I like I like Terry more, to be honest. But uh, I don't know. At least this guy can be used in uh, PvE scenarios and stuff like that. The banner is actually uh, rage-inducing. Like, what is that? <laughs> um, but the Holy Relics is pretty cool as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions of the collab are. I'm sure some of you guys were probably up watching the release of it and you've already seen a lot of this stuff. But if you made it to the end of the video, thank you guys so much. If you want to, leave me a comment or something like that and I'll be happy to reply. Uh, other than that, feel free to subscribe for more content in the future and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you there.